What's happening guys, I'm TechSource and today we're going to be building an awesome custom water cool PC. But not just any ordinary water cool PC. We're going to be building inside this, the Corsair Crystal 280X Micro ATX case. I'm pretty excited for this particular build because it's going to be very challenging for me. And you guys know I love a good challenge when it comes to building PCs. I've actually never built a full custom loop inside such a tiny case before. So we're going to be cramming all of these massive parts in such a tiny body. You know, that's something I usually do in the bedrooms, but I've never really done it for a PC build. So that's why I think it's going to be exciting and super fun for me. So I can't wait to get started. With that said, let's begin. So the total cost of this build is a little over $2,000 minus the cost of the water cooling gear. So in total, we're looking at close to $3,000, but not including the Windows key. Since you can get those super cheap anyways, you can actually pick one up for $15 on yourcdkey.com. And if you guys use my code TS20, you will get another 20% off. Check the links below. There's an ambulance going through every single minute. I haven't even started the build and it's like five ambulances that literally zoom by. Any hoosies, let's start the build. So we are doing a high-end gaming slash streaming PC to game in 1080p in the highest settings possible over 144 hertz. So that's the specs. That's the reason why I went with these specs. We're going with the Ryzen 7 3800X. Once again, it's an eight core 16 thread processor and it's gonna do just fine in this build. We're actually pairing this with the RX 5700XT, which is plenty for 1080p gaming. And for the motherboard, we are going with the Asus Crosshair Impact 8 Mini DTX motherboard. Um, I was actually gonna go with a, um, a Mini ITX board, but apparently a Mini DTX board still fits inside the case, so we are good to go with this. This is also the only X570 tiny form factor motherboard I have lying around in the office, so it's gonna work out perfectly. Let's pop this in. Yeah. Step one done. We actually have to get these uh, brackets over here because we're gonna be putting on a CPU block, so we don't need these as well. Let's pop these out. So the CPU block we're using is the XT7 from Corsair. This supports uh, Intel 1150 series socket types as well as AM4, and of course it's got RGB. And you guys, in case you guys haven't noticed, we are sticking with Corsair products all around. That way we can take advantage of the IQ software. Also, this build doesn't have a specific color scheme. Uh, we're gonna stick with the default colors of the parts and we're gonna change the lighting to RGB. And even the coolant, we're gonna stick with just clear coolant. So we're not doing any solid coolant this type around. We're gonna keep things simple. So the CPU block comes with the uh, Intel bracket already installed. So we're gonna have to swap this out for the AMD one. So I'm gonna twist this and slide it off. Comes off really easily. And then I'm gonna put on the AMD bracket. Just like that. We'll cover this just for now. And then lastly, we're gonna swap out the back plate. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the provided bracket. Flip the motherboard over. So now I'm ready to lower the block down, but before that, I wanna try and cable manage this wire over here. For some reason, Corsair has the cable running down the block, which makes no sense. The cable should have been on the top for easier cable management. So what I'm gonna do is run this underneath the bracket like this before lowering it down. As you can see, the cable is now hidden underneath the block, so you can't even see this anymore. So now it's time to install the RAM, and I have my lovely assistant Storm over here to help out. Uh, we're actually gonna be putting in two sticks since the board only has two DIMM slots. We're still getting 16 gigabytes of RAM at 3600 megahertz from the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. Storm, we're doing RGB RAM sticks. Are you excited? Of course you are. You like this color? I know it's the opposite, well, don't lick it. I know it's the opposite color of you, but you know, it's gonna look really cool with the uh, with the RGB lighting. So here we go. We're gonna push it, we're gonna push down on here with both hands. Both hands. Do you wanna help me push it down? 
No, you don't care? This is not fascinating to you, is it, Storm? So we're done with the ramp sticks. Um, Storm wasn't much of a help. She's just lounging there, enjoying life. Maybe we'll bring you back for another part of the video because it seems like you're tired. So it's, it's goodbye for now. You can tell my subscribers goodbye. Okay, guess not. Bye. Be free. Move it right along. We are gonna install storage. As usual in my builds, I like to keep it simple and clean. We're going with a single two terabyte M.2 SSD from yours truly Corsair. This is the MP600, but we gotta install it on this Sodem expansion. And finally, we're gonna pop this in the motherboard just like that. So common question that gets asked is why do people do water cool builds over just doing an air cooled system? I can't speak for everyone, but 95% of the reason why I do it personally is for aesthetics. I love the way water cool system looks. Um, the fact that you can customize it practically any way you want and really make it unique and stand out compared to other builds is the main reason why I do it. I mean, don't get me wrong, the super low temps that you get with it along with how silent the system is, is a nice bonus, but that's not the main reason why I do water cool builds. I'm sure a lot of people out there do it just for those two reasons alone, but for me, it's, it's aesthetics hands down. We're not gonna need the hard drive cage, so I think we can free up some space in the back here actually, because I might have to put the reservoir on the back here. Aha, so this case comes with two bays. Looks like there's one for hard drives and we have one tiny one over here for SSDs. It supports up to three SSDs and two hard drives. All right, see how much more room we have for activities now. It's gonna help out with cable management, of course. We're also gonna replace the two included 120 millimeter fans because we're gonna be swapping all those with Corsair's new QL fans. So, and I think we can fit up to six fans. So two on the top, two in the front, and then two more on the bottom as intake. Be gone, non-RGB. The case is looking pretty naked right now, so now we can begin filling it up with the good stuff, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Fun little fact, if you guys look up on PC Part Picker or any website about this case and motherboard combo, it will tell you that there is not enough clearance if you use this motherboard, which is completely false information. This is why I don't really use PC Part Picker websites because there's a lot of misinformation on that website. All right, it's time to put the GPU block on before we move on to the most important part of the water cool build, which is planning the loop. One of the things I love about the Corsair GPU blocks is how easy it is to put on. They even included the thermal pads on there, guys, so you'd have to even look at the manual and figure out where exactly you have to place them. And of course, for the graphics card, we're going with the reference model of the 5700 XT. This card actually runs pretty hot with this crappy blower design, but it's not gonna matter since we are gonna put it under water. Hope you guys are doing well, by the way. Um, I guess you can't really answer me, but uh, let me know what you guys are planning to do this weekend, assuming you're watching this on Friday when I upload. If you guys are playing any games, let me know what kind of games you're playing and just how your quarantine is doing overall. Damn, that's a lot of screws. So once we remove the back plate off the graphics card, we're gonna have to take off this IO cover as well. All right, there goes the IO cover. Now we can peel off the GPU. You wanna make sure you don't pull with a lot of pressure because there's some cables still plugged in as you guys can see. I had a very bad incident one time where my first water cool build, I peeled off the PCB and yanked off the cable. So learn from that pretty quickly. All right, that's one cable and that's two cables. 
this is it. This is basically the whole GPU, guys. This whole thing is just for cooling. So this is where we're gonna put the block on. Before that, we're gonna have to wipe the thermal paste off of... Do we have any toilet paper? Hey, we live in large, baby. We got a full roll. That means we're doing pretty good. You can always tell how successful someone is based on how many toilet paper rolls they have in their home. That is how we gauge success now. We're basically wiping off the old thermal paste. So I'm gonna place the GPU block with the face up. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this plastic cover. And I'm gonna lower the PCB down while making sure all the screws are aligned. So once all the screws are aligned with the block, then we can install the back plate. The beauty of the Corsair blocks is that you don't have to actually mount the PCB to the block itself. You can mount everything all at once with the back plate. And then you just use the screws provided with the GPU block and tighten everything together. Oh, and also don't forget to put the uh, IO cover back on there as well. All right, GPU is in. Oh, that's pretty good actually. That's given us plenty of clearance on the bottom to maybe fit a radiator. I'm not sure exactly what the radiator configuration is gonna be, but I'm thinking about doing maybe a 240 in the bottom and another 240 on the top. All right, so next step is quite possibly the most important part of building a water-cooled system. Planning your loop. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to do my runs inside the case, where the radiators with the fans are gonna go along with the pump and reservoir combo. I'm gonna be using Corsair's new XD3 pump reservoir combo and with its super compact form factor, I think I can pull this build off because this is practically a reservoir with a pump built in. It doesn't take up any space. So this is pretty much the MVP of this build. I'm a very visual person. So what I like to do is place the radiators inside the actual case and kind of just visualize, I guess, exactly how I'm gonna do the runs. 20 minutes later. All right guys, so after 30 minutes of banging my head against the wall, I've decided the best possible way to approach this. I'm actually going to mount the pump reservoir combo in the back of the case. Um, so technically I can mount it over here on the top fan, which was what I was originally going to do, but it's gonna, it's gonna seem too busy inside the build. There's gonna be a bunch of tubes going left and right. And honestly, I feel personally, it's going to look much cleaner if I put this on the back. Um, it's gonna free up a lot of space, obviously, over here, and it's gonna give me a lot more room to do my bends and my tube runs. So, with that said, this is my fan configuration for the build. I'm putting a 240 mil rad on the bottom as intake, another 240 mil rad on the top as exhaust. So you got two fans in the front for intake, two more fans on the bottom for intake, and then you got two fans on top for exhaust. So a total of six fans and this is actually going to be the best possible configuration for this build. I'm gonna have to get kind of creative with the tubing because obviously I have to have a tube going in and out of the motherboard tray to reach the pump and reservoir combo. So I think this is definitely the most challenging micro ATX water cool system I've done on the channel. And I'm getting actually excited just thinking about it. So I'm done yapping. Let's go ahead and put the power supply in the back first. That way we can kind of see how much more room I have to work with to kind of just find a place for the pump in the back here. So the power supply we're going with for the build is the RM650X. This is an 80 plus gold certified fully modular power supply and it's gonna provide enough juice or juices to power the system. So obviously we're gonna go with custom cables. We don't do stock cables here on TechSource. You guys, you guys already know. And the cables you're using this time are actually from mainframe customs. Let me tell you something about these cables, you guys. These are some of the best premium cables you can find anywhere online. These are actually the type of cables that I would use in Big Red in my own personal uh, build. Huge shout out, by the way, to Mainframe Customs for sending these cables in. And by the way, I would love to use you guys again for Big Red version four. This is the type of quality that I would use in my system, hands down. Oh, that is beautiful. I'm loving this tricolor, by the way. Gunmetal gray, black, and I think regular gray.
So since the bottom of the case is gonna be intake, I'm gonna be placing both of the fans face down first. And then I'm gonna place the radiator right on top, just like this. It's gonna be a very tight fit. Unfortunately, I won't be able to use any of the ports on the bottom of the terminal, so I'm gonna have to use the top ones instead. But I think I can make it work. I just have to be very precise on the bends and use the correct extension fittings down to the millimeter if I'm gonna make this work. Oh no, look how close the radiator is to the fans. It's practically touching it. That is unfortunate. Might have to do a little bit of modding to push the radiator more towards the back because this is, yeah, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with this at all. So as you guys can see with the cutouts on the case, this is the most I can push the radiator towards the back just because of course it didn't really give me that much room to work with. I mean, what is this? I would have loved to see maybe like a cutout this long for the bottom and the top. It would have given me a lot more actually flexibility to move the radiator. So what I'm gonna do Let's take these two out. I'm just gonna push the radiator back. Luckily, there are cutouts over here for the ventilation for the bottom of the case. So I'm just, I'm just gonna actually use these holes over here to mount the radiator. Technically, it's not modding, I guess. We're just gonna use different holes. It ain't pretty, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So with that new mounting method, ladies and gentlemen, we have cleared about an inch of space between the radiator and the front fan. So this, this I can work with. All right, now to set up the top radiator and fan configuration. So since the top's gonna be intake, we're gonna make sure the fan is facing the bottom. So this is one of the things I hate about case manufacturers, when they provide you with fixed mounting holes. As you guys can see, for this 240mm rad, there's only one way I can mount this. There is no room for flexibility or adjustment. If I was using a 280mm rad, as you guys can see, the holes are much wider. So it gives you more flexibility in positioning the radiator which way you want. I can't stress how important it is for PC builders, modders, or even anyone building a water-cooled PC to just give us more flexibility on mounting the radiators. It will make our job so much easier, especially for you know building a custom loop. All they had to do was just expand these holes. Kind of like what they did with the 280 mil radiator. I just I don't understand, you know, their manufacturing sometimes. So I wanna spice up the build a little bit by adding some RGB strips in there. So I'm gonna go with Corsair's new LS100 RGB strips. Now these are technically made for monitors. You place these behind your monitors and it kind of gives off a nice ambient lighting when it bounces off your wall and stuff. But we can actually use these in PCs as well because they all use the same connection. And once it's all hooked up, we can control lighting through IQ, which is perfect. And it just makes sense with this Corsair build. So I'm gonna be throwing in two 30 centimeter strips. And if you guys haven't seen these in action, wait till the end of the video. You'll see what I'm talking about. These are, in my opinion, the coolest RGB strips currently in the market. All right guys, so check this out. This is how you mount these behind your monitors, your desk, or even in your PC. They come with these magnetic adhesive strips. The magnetic side attaches to the strip itself and the adhesive portion obviously attaches to wherever you're mounting these strips. All right, so I've decided to put one on this side over here. There's plenty of space to squeeze one in there. So the way I'm gonna do it is peel all these off, the magnetic pieces, and then I'm gonna attach them to the strip. So I got three already. Now what I'm gonna do is Bring it gently inside. Make sure the strip itself is straight and just apply pressure so the adhesive sticks to the case. And the cool thing about these strips is that you can daisy chain them. So I'm gonna grab the cable coming out from this one. I'm gonna plug it into the second strip and do the exact same thing for the top portion over here. 
They even provided these cool little cable clips to manage the cables. All right, guys, so I think I'm gonna wrap up the video over here. I've decided not to half-ass on this project just so I can finish it quickly and move on to the next. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on it and perfect it. I'm not gonna settle for anything less than perfection. And the only way I'm gonna do that is by using precisely measured extension fittings, which sadly I don't have any right now at the office in the color black, at least. Uh, so I placed the order in, it'll be here in two weeks. So if you guys are watching this video, expect a finale or part two uh, in three weeks time. The only reason why I'm ordering extensions uh, is so that I can make sure every single run is perfect. I want this build to be flawless, all right? This is, I'm really happy with the way it's turning out, so I wanna make sure it's perfect before I, you know, release it for you guys to see. Um, but yeah, other than that, let me know what you guys think so far of the build in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you very soon in the next one.